has the lockdown in Thailand affected your gym as of right now, up until this point? So Thailand locked down the country uh, about the end of March. Now, our gym is located in Kualat province, but we're physically in Bulilam province because uh, that's just where most of the children go to school. Uh, it's a little bit more comfortable than the village, too. So when the lockdown happened, we couldn't cross provincial barriers. So we had our kids, uh, six of them, stay with us, and they're living with us. And we are also in contact with our trainer, his two children, and his wife. So it's just Boom and I, the six kids, and the trainer's family. Unfortunately, all of our other kids, we haven't seen them since the lockdown has happened. And that's been really hard on Boom and I, and, and I think the kids too. However, the kids that are at home have strong families, so we feel comfortable with them being at home. And they normally live at home as well too. So they're just kind of missing out on the, the every single day training Muay Thai. I mean, we're with these kids from 3 p.m., till 7 p.m. at least seven days a week. So we really miss miss the kids. But thanks to, you know, social media, things like that, we're able to call them. One of the kids uh, is pretty tough at home for her. And thanks to the support of our monthly donors, we've been able to send, to send her and her family uh, a little bit extra to just help them through this time. But, um, yeah, that was the, the massive change for us was just that we had to close the gym down. We are not allowed to open the gym. We are still training twice a day, but it's it's limited what we do. So you so you have the gym, but you actually can't even get to your own gym right now. No, we had to close the gym by government orders specifically, and obviously Muay Thai's been closed. So this is one of the busiest time for the kids to compete. I call it Muay Thai season. Uh, it's Thailand summer holiday, so the kids being at home is, is what we expect because school is closed. But there's so many competitions during this time. I had uh, fights booked for all of the kids right up until now, right up until April 23rd. So they got canceled uh, a month of fighting, and obviously nothing has been booked in advance. So that's been, that's been really hard on the, the kids as well, too. Our kids are very lucky, you know, because of the support of our monthly donors, 90% of what they make, they save. So all of our kids have saving accounts, and we're really proud of them for that. But, you know, they're just kids, and Isan is a rough place, and it's a hard place to keep them safe and focused. But I'm really happy to say, you know, all of our kids, they're training twice a day, they're cooking, they're cleaning, they're working around the house, they're fishing, they're catching chickens. So our kids are doing good, but it's not the same for other kids in the area. So the kids that you're not able to train and see every day now, do you do like a video training? Because that's, you know, obviously that became popular in the West, but doesn't seem to have picked up here in Thailand. It's No, I think, I mean, I, I will say like a lot of Muay Thai fighters, you know, this is, they love it. You have to love it, but it is a job. And so when you don't have any competitions coming up, it, it's a natural, you know, like a lot of my kids, I'm, I'm, it's, they're getting to rest, they're growing, they're getting a lot of sleep, you know, they're not in school. So we're not pushing that too hard with the kids. And um, most of the, the kids that are at home, they're, they come to the gym every single day, but they're more what I call like recreational fighters you know um but we do have one kid uh who's at home and he's working with his parents and I've been sending him workouts and he likes to do them so he but he's different than the rest I don't know many other kids I send I have a fighter at max and I send him the workouts but he's like oh yeah okay but I don't think <laughs> I don't think he's doing them some of the kids you know they know enough that they need to keep running and and try to stay in shape but again it's it's tough here. I, I really, really have to emphasize that because I think a lot of people from the West, they don't, they don't understand what it's like up in Isan and, and what essentially the life of a fighter is. So with no fights, it's very hard to find that motivation to train. Yeah, it's interesting that you brought that up because back in the West, it's more of a, it's like a hobby. 
people are looking forward to it. So they want that, even if it's a Zoom training class, they, they want that, but. They want it, for yeah. sure. And I mean, even professional fighters in the West, they work so hard, but it's, it's still very much, you know, a labor of love and not a necessity for them. So, you know, it, it's just, it's very different. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to pinpoint exactly, but um, if anybody comes up here, you know, and you spend enough time in Isan or even just in Thailand for that ma matter, you'll you'll understand it's a different mentality. Yeah, even from I noticed from the city out into the other provinces, even from Bangkok to out in Isan, right. it's still very different. So very different, yeah. for sure. Yeah, very different. So so how has this affected everyone else at the gym? So you have obviously you have all your kids at the gym, but now how about your trainers? I know you're working with a trainer who's always helping the kids at your gym. Like, what yeah. is, in, in cases like this, like, what do the trainers do when there's no gyms open? They don't have, you know, anything to, that, that's their livelihood. That's their work. So, so now right. what are they doing to busy themselves? I will say, I, I think all of us in Isan were very blessed in that we can still forage for food. And that is what a lot of people are doing. My kids are fishing. They're catching chickens. Um, they, we are very blessed again with the support of our monthly donors that it hasn't come to the point where we have to go fishing. So we're fishing, you know, Bat loves to fish. He's fishing every day and it helps out. But I think a lot of the other trainers and gyms, they've just gone back, back to that, you know, uh, catching chickens, uh, what is in season right now? Uh, I've seen people going out for ant eggs, fishing, frogs, I mean, really whatever that they can, you know. Uh, I think right now they do rats, they're catching rats, things like that. So they're just kind of going back to that farming life for for a lot of the gyms and just trying to stay, uh, stay afloat. People in Thailand are very giving as well, too. So I think a lot of these gyms, there's there's people in the communities uh, specifically Muay Thai that are helping a little bit here and there, whether it's a bag of rice or um, some canned fish. I know two of the kids that live with us, their dad works a few provinces away. He's a temple tradesman and the monks have been feeding him so that he didn't have to go shopping. You know, they've been giving uh, canned fish and things like that. So people are just kind of uh, going back to that more natural way. You know, I mean, a lot of people romanticize this way as well, too. Uh, it's tough. It's, it's really, really tough. It's a tough way to live. And, and people, it's getting rough out here. You know, with the mass uh, migration from Bangkok to Isan, it's put a strain on the already limited resources of the area. So people are feeling it here. But I do think we're very lucky and a lot luckier than the people in Bangkok to just have access to things like, you know, fishing and frogs. And I think today... Or this afternoon, the kids found a honeycomb, so they told me they're gonna go <laughs> get that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good point. I didn't think about that because, like, in a, in a way, I think people in the countryside have been more prepared for something like this. Obviously, right. you don't want to see this happen. You don't want to be prepared right. for something like this, but it's already almost ingrained in the lifestyle there. Like you said, I'm sure that the kids do a lot of this already on their free time. For sure. Whereas you have somebody in the office over here in Bangkok, they they might start panicking. They don't know what to do. Right. You know, it's it's a way different lifestyle. I mean, Bat's auntie, she forages for food. That is her livelihood. And she's raising, uh, she was raising five abandoned children. One went to Bangkok to work, got sent back because of the virus. Bat is now with us. Bat is self-sufficient. Um, but that is what she would do. She would dig for snails. Uh, she would like, there's certain types of edible trees out here. I mean, that was just what she did. And she's actually been delivering food to us. She made us a beautiful, um, I don't know how we'd say it, genkilek, but it's, it's like a wild grass soup and it's delicious. It's one of my favorite, favorite meals, you know, and it's just amazing to think how many hours go into making that, that bowl of soup, you know? So, yeah, they're, they're much better prepared for something like this, for sure. So as far as the, the Muay Thai community, what, what's happening to everyone? I, I, I know that there was supposed to be some scheme where they were going to give like 5,000 baht for three consecutive months to the fighters who have a boxing license or a knock Muay card. Is, so, have you been following that? Like, what's the story with all that? 
I have been following that, and I don't know what is happening right now, but they allocated a budget of 25 million baht, and we were told that 2,000 fighters would get 5,000 baht for two months, and that's it. Now, that is not a lot of people. There are thousands upon thousands of active fighters in Bangkok. They wanted people that were over 15 years old. And I contacted the sports authority in Kualat because that's where our gym is located. Uh, three of my fighters qualified and their names were put on a list. But Kualat province alone sent in 365 names. And they said that the budget was only allocated to 2,000 fighters and 500 trainers. I have no idea what's happening right now. And there's been some rumblings that the sports authority is now has already given out the money, but I don't know who's gotten it. And I know that there's a lot of gyms in Isan um, that said that they, they didn't get it, that the money's gone and the sports authority will be giving out bags of rice to these people. But so far that information has just been via Facebook. Um, with that being said, the Muay Thai community, we do a lot on Facebook in Thailand. So <laughs> it's not just like, necessarily hearsay but I haven't had any concrete information about that and uh, but I do know that a lot of gyms in Isan are struggling and one of the big things is we're all very scared for the children for the gyms that can't afford to keep the kids fed the kids have been sent home and a lot of these children are from broken homes and broken families and life in the village is rough. There is a lot of drug use. There's a lot of alcoholism. There's a lot of gang violence. And a lot of Muay Thai gyms have, you know, publicly said, we are scared for these kids. You know, we don't, Muay Thai keeps them safe and we don't want to send them home and we don't want them to get caught up in that, in that type of lifestyle. You know, it's, it's, it's a tough life out here. And um, I know personally that is my, my concern because it's really hard, you know, Muay Thai. It's, it's tough in Thailand. You fight a lot. you got to keep up. And when you lose that momentum and you're just a kid and maybe you don't have the strong family support or maybe you're not getting proper nutrition or the education isn't there, it's very hard for these people to overcome the poverty that they are just entrenched in because it comes at them from so many different levels. So when you lose momentum, it's really hard to get it back. And I, and I also think that's something in the West that is occasionally hard for us to, to compute because they think, Oh, you know, they make money doing it, but it's, it's really not that simple. Um, and I know that a lot of gyms are worried. I know some gyms have kept their kids, around and are, are doing what they can as I mentioned foraging for food to keep them you know different gyms are in different situations I've talked to Loma Lupunmi she's home training at, at her house which is also her gym so that's great because even though gyms have been closed down it's technically her house and I think her dad two or three of the fighters live very close by so they're they're actually staying at home and then just coming to the gym but a few of the kids he had to send home and he, he wants to bring them back. But it's it's tough. It's a big expense for the gym. And gyms in Isan too, you know, they often aren't taking 50% of these kids' purse, you know. Maybe if they take 30%, 20%, they're not usually taking uh, a big chunk until the kids get to Bangkok. But what the gyms in Isan do is they're not necessarily making money unless, they do get a kid that, that not only gets to Bangkok, but does well. Usually it's just more of like a communal environment. So the kids that make a little bit more money, that helps, you know, keep the little kids in school and fed. It's, it's not like people are making tons of money here. They're really just getting by. So to, 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 to go back just a little bit, to put it in perspective, like how much, so 5,000 baht is about probably about $180 American. What yeah. can that do for a family in Isan, in Northeast Thailand? Well, it, it depends on the family situation, you know. Um, for example, my trainer and his wife, his wife is now unemployed due to COVID. She worked, uh, or she will be unemployed. She worked at the school cafeteria. 
So she also didn't qualify for any government scheme or support or anything like that. Um, because they live in a small town, they pay rent, they pay electric, they pay for water, and they also have a truck. So they have a lot of expenses, and, and they're the families that are most at risk, is, is you know, the working class families here. Um, 5,000 baht will do a lot for them in terms of, you know, basic necessities. But when it comes to electricity, rent, and truck payments, it's not, it's not going to help. I mean, my trainer's wife, she was telling me about all the edible plants. Because when she comes over to our uh, apartment, uh, she was walking with me and she's picking these ones and she's peeling them. And she goes, yeah, you eat this. And it tastes just like Gai Lan. You know, like, I mean, they are doing everything they can to just take every single bot and maximize it. So, you know, they're the people that are, are really at risk. For some of the people that live in the village that are farmers, um, it's definitely affected them because, again, there's, there's so many more people that came home from Bangkok and are in the village and are, like I said, putting a strain on the already limited resources that are here. But they're still able to forage for food. And if they don't have any, you know, big monthly payments and, and they're living on the land that's theirs, I think they'll be able to better weather the storm. So now moving forward, what do you see happening to Muay Thai in Thailand? Like, is it, do you think it's going to be, you know, two months from now where things get back to normal? Or is it going to be six months? Is it going to be a year before all these events open back up, even the stadiums? Where do you see the sport, you know, because of COVID? What, what do you think is going to happen now? I think a lot of children will be lost. There will be a, a significant number of children that get displaced and lost and, and don't make it. And I'm, you know, it's blunt, but I really believe that, you know, Isan isn't strong enough. There's no support here for these kids. There's nothing for them. And I do believe that there are a lot of children that will get lost in this. And it is, it's really heavy on my heart. Um, sorry. <laughs> No, it's it's really heavy on my heart to think of these kids, you know. Um, Boom and I are uh, taking what we get and helping a lot of the gyms that are in need here. But I do, I, I worry, you know, about these kids because they're just kids, you know, and they really deserve a chance. 